Ah, I didn't hear go live. Ha! Ah, I was talking oh, to Katie us. <laughs> ah. Hi, everybody. Hello, everybody. We are live now that I hit the right button. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm just making sure everyone, give me a second. Whoops. Okay. You see Here it? Here we go. You're oh, there here. you go. Okay, yes, we are live. We just want to give everybody some, uh, we kind of early, we're just giving everybody time to get on here. to say hello, to say hi. It has been a long time and we are so happy to see um, everybody. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Are you seeing people on? Yes. Okay, now I see him. Now I see him. Now it's coming through. <laughs> hey, hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, hello. We're just. Nicole is going to give you all information, those of you who would like to participate in the Zoom, which means the way you see us, we'll be seeing you. If you would like to be on the Zoom with us, Nicole is going to let you know how. So we have 15 people now. So Amen. this is what we're going to do. Now, just a, a heads up. In inviting you all into Zoom, we are looking for you to actually participate, to talk, to uh, interact with us, to um, to be a part of this uh, Zoom women's class, just like we're in person. It'll give you the ability to do that versus typing. So uh, I'm going to post and let you see the passcode and the meeting ID number. So you don't have to have a Zoom uh, account you can just go into zoom.com if you don't have the the app or you can go to the zoom app and then you're going to hit join a meeting and then in that join a meeting you are going to put in these numbers and let me type them in let me get to the right screen and I'll type them in so you can see what to type in and then I will allow every I'll bring you in as you log in uh, but the first set of numbers that it's going to ask you for is the meeting ID. And I'm going to post that. And then after you hit that, uh, it's going after you hit join meeting, then it's going to ask you for the passcode. That's going to be the second set of numbers that I give to you. Um, so here we go with the first set of numbers. Let me get back to them. I am so sorry. It's taking me a minute, but I want to get it right. So your first set of numbers is... Eight eight five one five six four two seven seven six. Let me make sure I got that right. Eight eight five one five six four two seven seven six. Then your passcode. The passcode will be six four two three five three. And you should see that on your screen. Uh, as soon as I fix it to where you can see it. Uh, right about. It's going to be above Sister Walker's head and below Sister Brown and myself's um, picture. And I will just flash that just for a, a little bit, a bit. There you go. You should see that number that you need in order to get on. 
You should see that number that you need in order to get on. Hello, Elder Bell. Yeah. Uh, I made it. I see you made it really quick too. No, Ooh. wait till after. I was trying not to get a ticket. <laughs> okay, sit down. Okay. Okay, there's your passcode. I mean, the meeting ID number is the first set of uh, numbers. Then your passcode is the second set of numbers that is asked. In. And if you can't read that passcode, let me just say it out loud again. 642353. Yeah, in, in right, yeah. Hello, Sister Siobhan. You are on hey. live with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank oh, you. <laughs> and those of you who don't want to go live, you can hear and respond, type in your questions or whatever. Um, as you've always done. So, Nicole, are you done with your announcement? So we can yes, go ahead and get started. I am excited, and I don't want to run over and miss what we're supposed to be doing. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you, women of God, and some men that may be sneaking and watching. We thank God for you. We thank God. We know the Lord has a word. He has a word of encouragement for us on tonight. And we're just going to let him have it. Amen. Just make me speaking and watching. We thank God for it. I hear someone. Okay. We we just, I just love you all. We just love you all. We're going to pray. Um, okay. So, Sister Walker, you want to lead us in prayer? We got to go. Dear Heavenly Father, we come. At this hour, we come in thy son Jesus' name. We come asking you, first of all, for forgiveness of all sin. Everything that we've done in this day, as we come to prepare to hear the word and to receive the word, we ask that you would forgive us of all of our sins and iniquities and trespasses one against the other. We thank you for this day, and we thank you for this time and this hour to come together again, to meet again. Father, we pray that you would open up our minds of understanding, that wisdom will go forth as need to be. Father, we ask that you would give us a heart of receiving your word on today. Father, we ask that where there's problems, where we needed answers that we've never gotten in this hour of study, the Lord is my shepherd. Father, we pray for clarity in the name of Jesus. Oh, we Lord want Jesus. your Holy Spirit to reign on yes, us in this yes. hour in the name of Jesus, that Thank we you. can, that we shall and shall receive your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you. Amen. 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 I am so excited. We thank God for this opportunity. We thank God for each one of you that are on live on zoom and yes. those of you watching on facebook we want to uh ask god's blessings upon our bishop yes. who has yes. allowed us and encouraged us to be obedient and go forth as the lord lead and we ask that you all continue to keep him in prayer we have been learning and i'm telling you faith has been walking all across my forehead yeah. uh, and when god gave me this 23rd Psalm, yeah. he said, the Lord is my shepherd. And I'm telling you, now you, first of all, before I start going on, we want to encourage you, <laughs> jump in there. Uh, when Just jump in, you got to start talking so we won't have dead air, okay? We encourage right. you, you have something, questions, something you want to input, we want you to feel free. Uh, yes. We're going to read the 23rd Psalm first, and then we're going to, Go into it, okay? Does someone want to read, start uh, with the 23rd Psalms, or you want me to go ahead and read it? Go, go ahead. Read it. <laughs> okay. Psalms 23 and 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. 
He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Right. I'm telling you, I didn't get past the Lord. Okay? <laughs> right. I the. I got stuck on the word the. All okay, right. I'm, I'm, I'm praying, but let, let me share my testimony right quick here. I've been, I think I've been depressed, or I think I've been, now I won't say depressed. Uh, oppressed. Oppressed, burnout. Uh, I think I've been, um, what's that word? Grieving. I just, yeah. every day I felt like I've been grieving. And, and yeah. I get up in the mornings and I, I try to read, this has gone on for a month. And, and I was trying to read and, and I just couldn't read. I couldn't, it's like I didn't have the energy, the desire. And you know, when you don't really know what's wrong, you can't say, help me. Yeah. You can't tell Very somebody, true. I need you to help me because yeah. I don't really know what's going oh, on. I know true. something wasn't right and I'm praying, Lord, what is this? And I kept hearing the word grief and I'm like, why am I grieving? It's good. Okay, I thought I did already. I thought I was, I thought I was good at that. Uh, but apparently I was not. And uh, about a week ago, I said to my husband, or two weeks, I said, babe, I think I'm grieving. <laughs> and, and to say those words out loud, it's like, okay, that's what's going on. When you, you can't, you pick it up, you pick up the word of God, you want to read it, you know you need to study it, you know. And I'm like, I know I got to do this class is coming up, Lord, and I, I got to get it. I got to get in it, but I could not. And it wasn't like I was empty because I know the word of God is in there, yeah. but I need it. And it's hard to put words into what it was. You know when you need and, and you're not quite sure how to verbalize what it is, but thank mm -hmm. God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for that. So here we are tonight. Yeah. Yeah, say something because I'm going to go. Okay. This I never thought the 23rd Psalm, something that I was made to learn as a kid, would come back some 40 something years later and I would find a whole new meaning to the Lord is my shepherd. Yes, I know you were um, And to study it, I guess all these years, the only thing I've really did was just read it. But you always find so much more when you go back in and you actually yeah. take something and you study it word for word and then you digest it. But then you stop and you listen to see what God has to, for you to get out of it. Yeah. So I did like Bishop taught us to do. I did the who, what, why, when and where. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to know who wrote it and I found out David wrote it. David wrote mm -hmm. this. And the reason why he wrote it the way he wrote it is because he came from a place of experience. And you yes. know how we are. This is a great example of being able to talk to somebody or hear a story from somebody. And it's because they have experienced it. They have gone through it. They have walked the walk. They've actually been in the shoes. So you, it, it comes from a different different place than somebody just telling you, oh, yeah, girl, this, this, uh, I, I heard that this is what had happened. And then this is what they said. But to have someone that comes to you and they've had the experience it takes on a whole new meaning so david yeah. was a shepherd before he was a king and before he had all this his, this experience he was a shepherd so he made it a metaphor in uh the 23rd psalms um to for us to see the the how it compares uh, a shepherd to a shepherd 
and that has a flock to a shepherd that has a flock. <laughs> you know, so the, the, the sheep. Um, so uh, from a shepherd in the field dealing with the lambs or the sheep or whatever he's herding. Um, uh, uh, it says that uh, uh, David was a shepherd boy and he was the author of Psalms later to be uh, to be king as a shepherd king of Israel. Mm-hmm. That's what he was known as the king, the shepherd king of Israel. He writes as a shepherd would think and think and feel about he, his or her um, shepherdhood. Mm-hmm. And I thought about that. I was like, okay. So in order in in doing this, he first came from a place of, I know what it means to look after. Yes. <laughs> And, and the thing is, when you look at, uh, and I was trying, you know, I'm, I'm trying to find all the history and, and but they're, they don't know when David wrote this, no. but you know, you think about, uh, it had to be at a time when he had either, uh, one commentator said he was an old man. Another said he was at a point in his life where he had lost everything. And we can relate to being at a loss. We can be, we can relate to being at the point where we've lost everything. But when we look at the word, the, Mm -hmm. it's a function word Yes. before Mm -hmm. a proper name. But when David spoke it here, let me come back to my face. When David spoke it here, he was reflecting on the Israelites and how they had many gods before Abraham, mm-hmm. Abraham, but before God, when God called Abraham, Abraham's people, his forefathers served many gods mm-hmm. and, and God introduced him to himself. So when David is saying the Lord, he's not mm-hmm. talking about anyway. whatever God you want to name. He's not talking about the little figurines you sit up and twiddle with your hands or those you make and stick under your pillow, the little fat man with the bananas and oranges that we see when we go get our feet done. That's an issue too. The Lord had said we shouldn't do that. But anyway, <laughs> well, he was saying specifically the Lord, Jehovah, Jehovah, my shepherd is Rohi. Ah. All right. The Lord is not was, not maybe, not some God, not any God, not ASAP, not whatever these gods' names were. They all had names. Not any of those gods. Jehovah Roki. All right. Is my shepherd. Yeah. I've struggled. I've been through things. We have. We have been through. We have been at the bottom looking up right yeah and here right here the lord yes we have made oh my god people yes. our lord yes, yes. Mm. i remember yes. and just jump i remember when uh my mother passed away and our oldest son jj he saw me crying and he said mama don't worry i got you i held him to that he became my Lord because I trusted him to have me, to hold me, to strengthen me. You been there, done that? Anybody? Yes. Can anybody relate to that? Okay, yes. I know why I did that. When we trust people, yep. we trust oh, people yeah. to strengthen us. We trust yeah, God. Yeah. Make our friends, our uh, husbands, our boyfriends, our best yeah. friends, our family close trust them to protect us, to be there when we need, to to be encouragement when we need it, to Mm -hmm. help us. Like, girl, come on, get up out of that dump. Put you on some makeup. You look a mess right now. Clean yourself up. Go get your hair done. Come out of that that slump you're in. We -hmm. look for people because we have forgotten or we have not come into the knowledge of Jehovah Rohit. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The specific to the one true living God. That's right. 
the only one. Yes. yes. The yeah. Lord. I'm telling you, that made me excited. That word set me free. And also with faith, it was like, oh, okay, you lost your faith somewhere along the way. You put it down. Mm -hmm. well, what happened? When did the Lord become your shepherd? Mm -hmm. Has he become your shepherd? All right. Are we still waiting for him to prove who he is? Mm -hmm. David had gone through a lot in his life. He, he was content being a shepherd. <laughs> Hurting the sheep. David spoke of a God who watches over us, who feeds, who nourishes, who punishes when it's necessary. Right. Absolutely. This is not just a little scripture. Oh, I've read that and I've heard that. Focus on it. The Lord he is. is my he is. He is. Amen. You know, a good, a great part of um, the 23rd Psalms is also is that it was personalized with my mm -hmm. and you. It, it, he made it about the individual. The Lord is my shepherd that I shall not want. I and me's. Um, it, 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 it made it come home. And that's why I said he sent it from a place of experience so you could actually get the meaning and the just of the 23rd Psalms. Yeah. Um, because if you look up the word shepherd, which I did, it talks about yes. all these quali yeah. quanti qualities um, that a shepherd should have. Mm -hmm. And um, what a shepherd is, and I just lost it. Uh, one minute, y'all, I just lost it. Somebody why else can you, keep going. We had the, we got this little book right here. This uh, by Max Lucado. I don't know if you can see it. Um, safe in his arms, mm -hmm. safe in the shepherd's arms. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, Mr. Nicole gave me this book when I told her what the title of our lesson would be. And it took me a minute. Pardon me. This table, this lamp, this table. Mm -hmm. Go this ahead. Table. I muted her. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, in Max Lucado's book, he reads, though he's talking about God, though he creates, God was never created. Though he makes, he was never made. So when David said, the Lord, he was letting these people know who may still be hanging on the bush, on the vine, on the tree, on the stump, on the fence, who may not have come to the realization yet that there is a God that you cannot make with your own hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't need to feed him because he doesn't eat. He's not flesh and blood. Right. You don't need to go dress him up because that's what they would do too. That's what Abraham's people would do. And that's what a lot of the Israelites would do. They would go dress their gods up, put them on clothes. After they made them, built them, shaped them. They would go and dress them up like they were real people, leave food there for them to eat, prepare their meals. Can you imagine that? Right. I'm going to build something with my own hand and call it a God. Mm -hmm. David was saying here, the Lord, he's the only one. Right. Though he causes, he was never caused. God, our shepherd, doesn't check the weather. He makes it. He doesn't defy gravity. He created it. He isn't affected by health. He has no body. Jesus said God is spirit in John 4, 24. Since he has no body, he has no limitations. None. There is nothing that you need in your life, no issue in your life that God cannot fix, that God cannot heal, that God does not see. And we come and go in the house. We come and go to church. We, some of us have been in church for years and all our lives. And, and we, we hear the word. We feel the anointing sometimes. We even get a shout going on when the power of God is moving. The electricity from that power just pops off all over the house. And, and you feel like, okay, I got it. But is he really your shepherd? All right. Do you, right. Do you live in fear and anxiety? Mm -hmm. 
because you can't figure out something? Am, am I over? Okay, I'm going to keep going. David, at this time in his life, could have been sitting, looking back, and reminiscing about all the things that has gone on in his life. God loved David. He was special to God. But David suffered. He suffered loss. And he suffered loss because he killed. The shepherd that we serve, God, our shepherd, here, uh, the Lord here is not talking about Jesus. It's talking about Jehovah. When we read in the New Testament, Lord, it's talking about Jesus because he's our Lord and Savior. David didn't know anything about Jesus. He only knew about Jehovah. Okay? So here he sees Jehovah as the shepherd, even though if when you look at sheep, and I don't know how many have studied sheep, I was looking on the internet one day and uh, trying to get this all into my head without asking God. You know, I read first and then ask God later, which probably is not the right way to do it, but that's how I did it. I was trying to research everything I could find. I pulled up this one picture one day of, with a sheep, and it was a sheep that had gotten away from the herd. Mm. This sheep had been by himself like lost and it had been by itself so long his wool had grown over his eyes he had stickers and bugs and sticks and all kinds of things he had been wet in the the his his uh hair fur what is that called oh, wool what's that oh, his wool was so heavy his feet were were not manicured and they had grown his hooves had grown all out of shape Look at the saints. Look, when I'm talking in the natural, I want us to see us in the spiritual. You've gotten away from the shepherd, from the rest of the herd. You're out there by yourself. And because you're out there by yourself, there's no one to lead you away from the thorns and thickets. No one to lead you to the calm waters. Uh -huh. So you out here wandering around all by yourself, had a stick stuck in his eye. It was so infected. He, he could barely see. He couldn't hardly eat because everything was covered up. He was just so weighted down with mess. Saints of God, okay. weighted down, so weighted down with the things of the world, we can't even find our way. We feel so lost, we can't even see God. This was a sheep that got away from the herd. You hear people say, oh, you don't need to go to church. You know, you, you don't need to go. It's too much going on. It's too many rules. And, and that's the devil. Because when you get to yourself, by yourself, that's where the enemy wants us. Mm -hmm. Away from where the power is. Away from saving grace. And, and I'm just telling you about natural sheep. Some in, in this book, he says sheep are dumb, but sheep are not dumb. There are sheep who want to follow. They want to yeah. be close to the shepherd because those sheep know they're going to get the best. Yes. They're going to get a little extra food. They're going to get some of the best food. Yeah. And I'm, t I'm not talking stuff. I'm talking spiritually. Mm -hmm. But we're looking at sheep in the natural. Right. Sheep voluntarily follow the shepherd. Then there are those who just wander all over the place who just wander. Eventually, they'll come to the herd. Mm -hmm. But before they get with the herd, they just wander. Yes. The, the herd's going one way, and they're over here inspecting the bushes. Instead of being committed to Jehovah Raw Heat, yeah. we are over-inspecting the bushes. All right. uh, we're trying uh, to see uh, a little bit of what's out there, all right. what yeah. I might be missing. Yeah. Why are you trying to lead me over here? Let me just check out over here. There, because it looks a little interesting. A little greener might be right there. It mm -hmm. looks a little green right there, and and I just need to go there for a minute. I need to check this guy out. He, you know, he really got me, and he's saying the right things to me, and he's there for me, and he's supplying some stuff that I need in the physical. He's real good to me. Talk really good to me. You know, he yes. helped me pay my bills and put gas in my car and come in. You know, just he's good to, but he not safe. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's not following the chip. 
He's that bush you're looking at over there. Mm -hmm. And if you keep on looking at that bush, you're going to be left behind, you and the bush. Yeah. That was just something the Lord just gave me to say. And uh, let me, <coughs> let's go back. We got some the stuff Lord on. Go ahead. We got questions. Well, we got some statements, and I want to get some of them. Uh, we have one that says, I used to live in fear and anxiety, but since my growth and new walk with God, I have well, came we off all my, dis depression, my depression and anxiety medicines since the middle of July. God is good. Yes, he is. Yeah. And then the next one is the 23rd Psalms uh, 1, I shall not want. But I shall be supplied with whatever I need. And if I have not everything I desire, I may conclude it is either not fit for me or not for me. Or I shall have it in due time. Yeah. Go ahead. The, those, are the, uh, those are the two uh, that I wanted to read so everybody could hear a testimony and then another explain explanation of I should not want. Okay. Yeah, I'm got the ma'am. You know huh? Huh? Can y'all hear me? Yes. Can you hear oh. <laughs> yeah. I didn't see the green thing up there. Okay, up there. Um, I was gonna add to um what Sister Brown and Coco was saying earlier. Uh, when I was looking at this uh, Psalm 23, I, I felt like uh, I've never seen it in this light before either. And Sister Brown got stuck on the, I think I got stuck in that first that first verse um, myself. But then I was looking at something. I, I was considering some things as a whole. The mm -hmm. fact that, um, that David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I was looking at the fact that he used the word shepherd. Now, we, as, it, as it was said earlier, it, it comes by personal experience, for one, but have you ever thought about it? He, he uses the metaphor shepherd. He was familiar with what a shepherd does, but he didn't use a metaphor like the Lord is my king, the Lord is my rock, the Lord is my shield, the Lord is um, my deliverer. He's my high place. Now, throughout the Bible, we know that God is all of those things. But in this particular instance, because I was looking, I said, man, this is six. This is a, the 23rd Psalms is six verses, but it, it is six of the most powerful verses. And it covers not some territory, but it pretty much covers all territories. Mm -hmm. So have you ever thought about the difference in the metaphors? Why did he use shepherd as opposed to king deliverer? Rock, shield, high place. Have y'all thought about that? Mm -mm. Wow. Why did he say shepherd instead of the Lord is my deliverer? <laughs> That's good. The Lord is my high place. Why did he say shepherd? What is it about a shepherd that is different from a deliverer? We can use, we can use Moses as, you know, Moses was a good example of, or what a deliverer might look like. We know what a, a, a strong rock looks like. It's a good foundation, right? Uh -huh. We know what a shield looks like. We know what mm -hmm. kings do. Why did he use shepherd? What's the difference? Okay, Ladies, you're on here. Anybody got anything? I'm thinking, okay. Go ahead. I'm, I'm thinking I did not think of that before now, but because of all the characteristics of the shepherd, um, you know, somebody that guards and leads and mentors and tutors and like a rock wouldn't cover everything. Um, I just, I think it's because of all the different things that a shepherd does or is. Okay. You, you kind of, you're hot. Anybody else? You have an answer? To it. I mean, I, cause oh yeah, I don't know why, and you bringing it up is the first time ever considering it. But when you were saying all the other titles, King and Rock, and all the other things that David has used, or other titles that David has had, off the top of my head, it seems that the Shepherd is the most humblest. But as he goes down the list, 
it's also the most powerful. So it's kind of like a, you take the simple thing to show how great it is, but I don't know, I'm listening, go ahead, yeah. How about if we, we use the word, or we've heard the word, intimate, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So in order for someone to be intimate, when you think about a shepherd, a shepherd is someone who not just leads you and guides you, not someone who um, looks for the green pasture, not someone who watches out for the wolves, but a shepherd is also someone who lays with the sheep. I'm not talking about sexually, I'm talking about lay down with them at night, mm -hmm. get in the mud, the grass, the the shepherd is also one who, who may not uh, uh, sleep under a roof at night, but might sleep under the same moon that you're sleeping under. They get the, uh, um, what I call down and dirty, okay. as opposed to the kings, the deliverers, the rock, the shield. If you notice, they kind of sleep in separate quarters. We know shepherds, they sometimes they smell like the sheep. Right, right. Sometimes they musty and 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 I mean all of it because they in the in the trenches as we would say, they're not someone who be like, hey, move it over here, lay right there. You know, they may lay down in the same place. If you look at shepherds, if you ever watch, just like she was using sheep, if you ever look at how shepherds lead their sheep, watch some of those movies. Oh, they get down and dirty with them. Sometimes they got to pick them up carry them. I mean, they smell like their sheep. Yes. Yes. And I, oh, I'm sorry, Miss Tiny. I just said that's tight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, there's a couple comments. We don't want to leave anybody out. Uh, Sister Lauren says because David understood what a shepherd's job is. Uh, Sister Catherine said the shepherd knows his sheep. The king rulers rule over you, Sister Mark says, a shepherd is a caring instructor. Uh, and Sister Sonia says, a shepherd will do whatever he can to keep you safe, to cover you, to mend you. Uh, he knew all that he did and cared for the sheep. Now, for those of you, uh, Sister Tuka uh, mentioned a lot of things that a shepherd does, but when you look at the Lord being your shepherd, mm -hmm. From the natural sense, David recognized the fact that God will take the time necessary with you. Mm. Whatever he needs to do in you. As a shepherd, David would search out the pathways. Mm -hmm. that he needed to take his sheep to the high places to get food. Sometimes the Lord will allow you, most times, You'll have to hurt. You will have to suffer. You will be wounded. But he's going to keep you alive. We expect that when God is leading us, that there will be no harm. We, we, everything going to be hunky-dory. We're going to be happy. Mm -hmm. We're going to have everything we need and everything we desire. But that's not the way it works. To have the confidence that David showed in this chapter, in this verse, when he says, the Lord is my shepherd, David recognized that God had led him. God had chosen him from the sheepfold. Yes. Stinky boy. Wasn't, didn't, wasn't a good warrior. You know, he led sheep. Just like Sister Tuka said, he smelled like sheep. He was outside with the sheep, looking up at the stars, laying in the grass. But the thing about a shepherd that should prick your hearts is that just as natural shepherds, suffer for us. I, when we look at our shepherds of the house of God, though they're considered our shepherds. Yes. And when we look at how they suffer sickness because of us, they suffer lack for us, the sheep. They suffer bad reputation, a bad name. They will suffer uh, their joy for the sheep because they go to bed with you. They worry up, they take you when they go on vacation, they take you, us, the sheep. When they're supposed to be resting, they have the sheep with us. And those of us who, who, who have gotten wounded along the way, what are they trying to do? Pick you up and carry you. And some of us fight back and we kick it. We rams. We're not, we not the, the she goats. We're the sheep. We rams. We kick it and fight because we don't want the shepherd to take care of us. But God 
chose him and he led him. He blessed him to have the heart of the people, but he also whooped him when he got out of the wheel. Mm -hmm. He gave David everything he wanted, but David chose. He chose to take something that wasn't his. Mm -hmm. But when he repented, he accepted it. But he had to pay the price. And yeah. David's sitting here, and I'm, I'm, this is me. I'm looking at an older man because I don't believe, in, and correct me if I'm wrong, that a new convert can honestly say, the Lord is my shepherd. No. Experience. No. Mm -hmm. Experience tells you that. Yeah. Uh, going with God, having him, his, his angels, his ministering angels, his angels that war for you, that, that tell you it's going to be all right. The Holy mm -hmm. Spirit reminding you of God. Let David know there's going to be war in your kingdom always. There's never going to be peace. There's always going to be fight. Yes. But he didn't kill it. We have to suffer the consequences of what we do. But I didn't do anything to anybody. I've never done anything to anybody. But you said I'm a child of God. And in mm -hmm. order to know the power of God, you have to go through we're in spiritual warfare. So we go through in our minds. We, the enemy will come and say they don't like you. Your mother don't really love you. Your father is lying. My father didn't, wasn't in my life. I knew who he was, but he wasn't in my life. But we can hold on to that. We can hold on to the loss we've experienced, the pain that we're going through right now. You can hold it and carry it if you want to. But that's not the will of God. Right. He wants to be the one who leads you. And we have to follow him. In order to be for him to be our shepherd, that means he leads and we follow. Right. And where he leads us is uncomfortable a lot of times. Because when the shepherd had to take the sheep to the mountain, because all the food, it was time, and he would spend months and months away from his family because the sheep needed to be fed. And he would lead them through dangerous paths where they could get killed if they didn't follow him. Right. We have wounds because we didn't follow the shepherd. Uh, go ahead. No. Okay. Oh. We have unnecessary wounds because we have gone off on our own. And then we're wondering, well, Lord, where are you? Mm -hmm. Jehovah, Rohi knows your tomorrow he knows your yesterday he knows your five minutes from now he knows your 30 minutes ago okay he knows he knows what it takes for bonnie to remember that i'm i am in. i got this i got you yes. you can't hold on to individual and expect them to be what you need because that's not God's will. He's a jealous God. Yes, yes. yes. Mm -mm. He won't allow that. Because some of us are saying, Lord, I need you. I need you. And I believe you. I trust you. I have faith. You yes. know, Bishop been teaching on faith, breaking it down. And oh, I just got all this faith. I have the faith. Mm -hmm. My mustard seed faith is at work. And you hide me in a corner somewhere. You won't come out. You're afraid to speak up for the Lord because I may not say it right. Okay. Ladies, we're here. What do you have? I see you. Sister Siobhan, Sister whoever that is down there, Sister Cobbs, welcome. And Sister, hey. Sister Ma, I see all of them. Sister whoever that is down there. So, how is the Lord your shepherd? Somebody answer. Somebody's how listening. How is, the Lord? how is the Lord your shepherd, ladies? Well, uh, when I look at the Lord as my shepherd, I shall not want. It made me really think about why, how to, how, how to want what you need, what you want. The Lord is my shepherd, I should not want. So that means when I get in God's word, everything that in his word, I should be able to receive it. So that I should, should not want. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh. So 
that's that's what when I read the first because I really didn't get deep into it like everybody else, but I was reading the first verse and I was reading the second verse also where it said he makes me to lay down in green pasture he leading me beside the still waters that's when um I'm in a place where I don't want to do what I'm supposed to do in the still waters when I'm by myself when I feel like that I'm lonely God reminds me that in that still place he is still there so him being my shepherd, the Lord is my shepherd. It also helps me to be more committed to my ministry, to my to my shepherd who's over me. So I never I didn't get too far into it, but the Lord is my shepherd. So it's helping me to be more committed. I just feel like that's the that's the main thing that that really been sticking with me lately is commitment it, and it's because of when I because I had wandered off and I know that I had wandered off and it took me so much time to come back and now that I'm coming back I'm with commitment that is helping me to stay as long as I stay committed I'm staying I'm I feel like I'm staying up under the umbrella of God just my commitment I just I, I just feel like if I lose my commitment, then I will go back. So, you know, that's that's what this is meaning. This is what this is meaning to me. When I say the Lord is my shepherd, God is truly is my shepherd. And now I'm learning to really trust God and with trusting him and all that that Bishop has been teaching us on faith because I was really in a place on that faith where, okay, do I really believe? And, and then, you know, someone else was like, girl, you believe? But, but I have to say that to myself. Do I believe? Yes, it's personal. I can hear it all day long, but was I really truly believing? And I was not truly believing. I, 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 I trust, believe, all of it, I will say it. And then I come home and I say my prayers and I be saying, asking the same things all over again. So I feel like I was not truly in a place where I was truly believing. But as he broke it down to me and as he put all that on the board and as I studied all that, I was like, oh my God, I am getting where I need to be at, where I learned that the Lord is my shepherd. So why I am a single woman, as long as I continuously to allow God to do what the desires that I need because I do have desires. I do. I won't. I, I do. Everything within me still works. <laughs> I just, I just uh, wait on. I'm learning to wait. I'm learning to wait on God. I'm learning because I have made so many mistakes and y'all, it's not easy being single, but because I'm scared because I'm at a place now where I don't look at nothing and I don't want nothing to look at me. So how am I going to ever get anything? So I don't know. And, but I don't want to go there. But anyway, you know, so I'm just I'm just learning to trust God. I'm trying. I'm just yeah. But I, I just feel like if I don't let somebody approach me, if I don't approach nobody, I'm gonna stay single for the rest of my life. But I don't want to stay single. But I do want God in my life. So you the sheep that looks at the bush and kind of want to go and test it out and see what's over there. Not no more. I don't. I used to, but I don't no more. And I think that's like, oh my God, am I getting dead or what? <laughs> I'm, I'm still young. <laughs> While we're talking, let's go to John 10 and 7. Uh, because, go, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, why y'all getting that? I just want to jump on her bandwagon for a second. Okay. Um, when you look at uh, coming from, some, like, say, a, say a, a, a independent woman stance to know or to say the Lord is my shepherd because like you said it deals with trust commitment yes. trust is so big yes. in the third psalm and and commitment yes. and when you find out as a as a sheep that says the Lord is my shepherd that I want this I want God to be my guide I want him to direct me and when you are independent woman when you're used to making all the decisions uh, when you're used to being the one who has to look out for your family, uh, when, when you have become the head of your household, um, you you find out 
reading this here Psalms, when you find out who God, like, we, okay, we know all this, but when you really dig inside of it as to yes. what the shepherd does and, and how he behaves and how he performs, because me, I'm that one, I like to be in control. So if we about to, roll, if we about to walk up the mountain, I'm going to need to know what all is on this mountain, how how we going to go, what's the altitude once we up high, What's the air gonna be like? Yes. Um, am I gonna slip and fall? Yes. Um, you know, I need all the details, God. So to really say the Lord is my shepherd, me when it looked like something crazy he about to have me to do, ask me to do, want me to do, when I'm a good sheep, because this right here, the experience of David is giving me, is telling me I can trust God. Mm -hmm. And then God is saying, Yeah, you, you can trust me, you can show enough, trust me. And it, it's like, who really yielding control. Right. And yielding it to him. Yes. And that's when it gets tough. But that's yeah. when that's when we got to really say or we really put our trust and our commitment in him and walk. And and I'm not going to lie. I think I think that's going to feel real good um, to do that, to like just pass that burden on to him. And, and that's where I'm at in my life. Listen, let me go on and give it to him because, you know, I'm tired of driving. I'm tired of driving. Like she's, like Siobhan said, I'm tired of making up. There's nothing wrong with the wheel. There's, there's nothing wrong with you desiring someone to be at one with a mate. We, we were created to have a mate. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with that. It's that when you say, Lord, I want you to lead me then that means we're going to follow him. He may be leading you somewhere. It's like, wait, hold up. You yeah. run along. That road is a... <laughs> yeah. Because I know how to go that way. I've been there. Yeah. And I know that direction. I know how to get up the mountain going that way because I've been there. But God wants to take you way over here. You got to go. He took the children of Israel, what, 40 years? Yeah. Well, just he could have went across the way and been there. But... There's a reason for it taking so long. That's right. And just like he had to allow what was in them to die off, he had to allow all those people that came out of Egypt with them to die off, that whole generation to die off, so that the new ones, the young ones, the, the ones that were born into him could go to the promised land. Mm -hmm. Well, Lord, that gun, I mean, I, I gave myself to you, and I've been waiting. I mess up every now and then, someone asked. When you mess up, get up. Stop, just keep, stop going. I, I know I'm going to mess up right here, but I know God going to forgive me. Stop doing that. Amen. Amen. You're going to get in that hole one day, and God going to say, I'm going to do that for a while. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Roll around yeah. for a while. You're going to suffer the consequences right. of that. That means you may have to go to jail. You may lose everything you have. You David could have, David was at a point, someone said, where he had lost everything. His kingdom was gone now. He was just sitting on the porch in a rocking chair, thinking about, okay, I'm at my lowest point, but God going to take care of me. Some of us have been in empty. I don't have a dime in the crevice of my purse. Yeah, I don't yeah. have any more strength. I have pulled out every piece of strength I thought I had. And I don't have any more. And, and I've tried to figure out how to get victory over this thing, but I just can't seem to. This is when God says, okay, now, you ready for me to lead you? I know you're right. Mm -hmm. I want to know, if you say we're going uh, to California, I want to know the route we're taking. If we go to the airline, I need to have it on my phone. I want it on paper because of phone. Yeah. I'm going to recheck, double check. Yep. That's what I do. We don't go nowhere unprepared. I'm not getting in the car and going home for a hotel room. Did that, done that. We slept in the car. We couldn't find no hotel. We had to end up coming back home. Tired, all dead tired. But we couldn't find a hotel from here to St. Louis. Because we all decided we're going to jump in the car and go on a <laughs> vacation just out of the blue. I'll never do that again. <laughs> won't do that again. Mm-mm. Right. You learn. You you should learn mm -hmm. when you bump your head enough. Yep. Yeah. When you yeah. find yourself in the same spot over and over again, at some point you're gonna say, "I'm sick of that." That's right. 
Man, that's right. I'm there. <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> but recognize it and be at peace with it. David said this in a way that made us feel like, okay, God is really good to this man. So he was a king. He messed up as a king. His son, whom he loved, Absalom, was trying to take his kingdom. Right. That was fighting in his family. Right. And I know we have in fighting. I never would have ever thought that my family was never, ever going to have issues. I just knew we'd always be close because I'm setting a good example. Huh? Right. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> things we have to suffer through. And, and if you say, I trust God, if you say he's my shepherd, then, okay, I'm going to get behind you. And let you feed me. Amen. Come and have me, me and Tuka. I don't know about all of y'all, but I know we have a tendency. Let me help you. You follow me. And I can take you in the right direction. I do that with bishops sometimes. I'm like, oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> can we just do it that way? You know, I don't have to hear God saying, shut up. Because I've got another plan. I've got another way. And, you know, let me give me a minute. I'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. That's not what God wants. He wants us to submit our wills to our shepherd, to him. Okay. We let's, got some let's questions go read John real quick. Chapter seven first. Go ahead. Mom. You sure uh, have some questions. You all have it? Uh, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. What happens when you get lost and or stray and lose sight of who is who is your shepherd? What do you mm -hmm. do to get back on track? I want to say this. Let me interject this first First of all. We have to go back to the beginning. David was a shepherd. Mm -hmm. He didn't right. understand what it was being a shepherd. But he was a shepherd boy. Right. So he was familiar with all the things naturally. First natural. Mm -hmm. First natural. Yes. Then on down the line, as he grew, got great, was beautiful, was handsome, became king. He could have whatever he wanted because he had been this shepherd. Mm -hmm. He forgot. We forget. We get stuff. We grow up. We mm -hmm. stop submitting. We stop right. obeying God. And because we have favor with God, you know, we know he'll forgive and he'll do this. He never, was never his commandment. It was never to be concubines, a wife, and then all these women. They took him two years to get round to, but he never lacked sex. That was never the will of God, but he allowed it. So when this thing came up in his life, he then began to understand that the Lord is my it's, shepherd. That's right. It's Amen. where we come Amen. from. We, we've got it. It's in us. We just don't understand it. Right. But the root has been placed. Now the tree has to grow. Well, the seed has been placed. It dies so that it can grow up in us to become the tree of life in our, in our lives. So that's where we at. We grow up. He didn't make us robots. We don't have to commit. We don't have to. But when Sister, when Sister Tuka was talking, Sister Brown was talking, it's like submit. We yes. forget that we have to submit. It's called submitting. Submit. And being a single Absolutely. woman now, I, I heard Sister Siobhan, I'm, I'm in my late 60s, rolling down here. Yeah, they late. They ain't no more middle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I still desire a husband. But I know that I can live without one Amen. because the Lord is my shepherd. And because of what he took me through before Bruce died, he said, I'll leave him here. And he still won't be able to do nothing for me because he wanted my faith rooted and grounded in him, knowing that, yeah, he's here to serve a purpose, but I'm your shepherd. And I'm mm -hmm. telling you, 22 years he's been gone and i've never lacked anything i had a niece that called me and said ain't may you mean you don't even have a deal though i said not even do deal i said if it ain't real i don't want it and i don't need it 
I said, you have to get a commitment in your life and be committed and know that God will do it. He will keep you. So you don't ever feel like you? I said, girl, I'm not dead and buried. Yes, I do. But I'm in control of this flesh. I said, I'm in control. I ain't forgot how to get a man. I ain't forgot how to pick up a phone and call somebody. I said, you don't forget. But I'm committed because I want the blessings of the Lord on my life. And I don't want one chance to cause me to lose my anointing, the power that God has given. I don't want to lose him because of what I feel like my flesh needs. Right. I said, that's the thing. You will get to the point that you don't need. I look at Mother Davis. Y'all y'all don't know what y'all miss in not befriending them mothers that ain't had oh, a man yeah. in 30 and 40 years. And they'll tell you, oh, honey, I'm not there. But they're yeah, in they control. Will. It's called submitting to the power of God. That's why he is my shepherd. And I want to read, I, I just want to read this. It says, if you have the shepherd, you have grace for every sin, direction for every turn, a candle for every corner, and an anchor for every storm. You have everything you need, and that's why I find my place. I do have everything I need, but he's still teaching me. He's still allowing me to go for things so that I can be rooted in knowing that the Lord is my shepherd, and I use that a lot. That thing will roll yes. up in me when something happened that the Lord Mm -hmm. The Lord is your shepherd. He's mine. Mm -hmm. Like David, he's mine. Now, I don't know what he is to you, but I know what he is. He's my shepherd. Amen. He is Amen. that for me, with me. And it's take, it took death. It took loss of friendships. It took, it took a lot of things to get me there, just like it did for David in his old age to realize the Lord is my shepherd. He leads and he guides. He protects and he delivers because he's my shepherd. And when we look at the shepherd, that's just what he is. He is our deliverer. He's our God. And that rod and that staff, I love. Yes. Because he know how to beat off, but he know how to pull you back yes, from does. danger, from harm. He'll do it, but we have to let him. And then let he leads him. me beside mm -hmm. still walking. That's right. He restored me to my natural Amen. state, to where I need to be. So we got to, David, uh -huh. David remembered all this. He knew what a shepherd was because he did it first natural. Now he's learning it spiritually. Amen. We have, Amen. We have minutes, but we have some comments. Uh, Sister Mark says, I'm hearing each one say that we all have gone off the path. Yet that is life. If it doesn't rain, the green plant will never grow. When I found that all things people in my life I loved and was close to could not fix or change life's very, very low value. I know the Lord is my shepherd. Sorry, I'm late responding, had to cry. This is great. <laughs> um, Sister Elther said, that's true. There are times when Jesus Christ asked me, do you trust me? I said, yes, Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. I have to trust you. Amen. But in honesty, there are times we really don't. Amen. Amen. There are we some things I, I, I just might not trust you just right here. I, I can't because I can't see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where saints, that's where we mess up because we want to see it. That's why how the children of Israel got caught up in idolatry because they needed a God they could handle. They needed to feel God. So they made their own so they could feel God. Mm -hmm. We, we want to please the flesh. That was a flesh yeah. thing. Jesus came spiritual to tell us about our spiritual man. Okay. It's eight o'clock. We going to come back to this. It's eight o'clock. <laughs> I'm so fast. Yeah, we bring something in. Okay, so we're going to be on. We got to read uh, John, John 10 and 7. 10, 7 through. I'll oh, just read all that. It's, it's so good. Yes, and we're going to go to the second verse when we come back. How about that? Uh, they are okay. asking for the name of the book that we're referring to. 
and um, and uh, they're asking me to put it up, so I'm going to put it up on your screens. Okay. Just uh, while, while we pray, and uh, it'll be scrolling across. Okay. So, yes. Father God, we come now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you. Thank, thank you, We Lord. thank you. We praise you. We give you. Thank you, Lord glory. Jesus. Yeah. Lord, Lord, Jesus. I give you glory. I thank you for your yes, grace. Yes, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for your kindness. I thank yes, you for thank your you, long suffering towards yes, me. Yes, yes. Lord, I yes. thank you for these women on this panel. Thank these you, Lord. Facebook and the men that are watching. Lord, I ask that you encourage their hearts tonight. Yes. You need in their life. And Lord, if you're not going to meet it today, encourage them and remind them that you are their shepherd. Yeah. And you know, you know how far to go. You know how much we can bear. And you are the shepherd of our souls. Yeah. And yes, we Lord. trust you, Lord. Thank it's you, Father. Everything we see and feel, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for our pastor, our bishop. Yeah. We ask that thank you, you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Father. Open up the word of God to him and allow him to present it to us, that that we need. Yeah. Help us to be sheep, Lord. There yeah. are a lot of goats in the midst yes, of the shepherd. Yeah. Jesus. Lead the sheep. There's some goats there, too. Yeah, Father yeah. God, and we desire to be led. Yeah. We desire to get on board and follow you yeah. and follow the people you've assigned us to. And, Lord, we just thank you for these women. Yeah. We thank, thank you, you Lord. for your blessings, and we praise you, we bless you, and we call it done. Amen. 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 Thank you, ladies. Uh, Sister Brown, a uh, question of when is the, the next class? Oh, yeah. Um, wait a minute. Hold on. I don't know. Um, well, it's one tonight right now, so this is the 31st. Um, how about mm -hmm. today's the 31st of October? Two weeks, David. So, two weeks. We could do the 14th or the 28th. Which one works for code? 14th. Of September? Yes, ma'am. The 14th of September, which is a Tuesday, 7 p.m. Two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. So, read John 10. John 10. Uh, starting at the 7th. John 10 read, and 7. Study that. Go back to Psalms 23 and think on these things. John 10. John 10 and 7. John 10, 7 through uh, 19. Where Jesus is. Mm -hmm. Talking about the sheep. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Okay, ladies. All right. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Have a great night. Next good time y'all gotta talk, that's why I didn't say nothing. I tried huh? to hold it. I said, next time they gotta talk, I was trying not to say nothing because I wanted Tammy and Sister Cobbs 